Hey guys, Joe Biscaglia here following the Bills 16 to 12 victory over the Cincinnati Bengals. They are now five and five on the season. Somehow, I know it didn't look pretty at times. It looked pretty desperate. I know Bills fans probably had that feeling right in their stomach that kind of rose up to their to their heads going, they're going to lose it. They're going to lose the game. They're going to lose the game. They didn't. They held on. The defense was really the key to helping them secure that victory. We'll get more into that in just a bit, but uh, from a grand perspective, the Bills are now in a situation where they're 5-5 five and five on the season, heading into the stretch run, final six games. They're going to need to rack up victories, probably going to have to win uh, five of their next six games. This is a situation where they needed a victory against a fairly good team and a playoff contender in the Bengals, and they got the job done. Now, really, one of the two big aspects of the game was injuries, and LaShawn McCoy with this thumb injury. Robert Woods with his knee injury. The Bills did this in spite of not having them out there, and you have to kind of give a hat tip to Mike Gillisley and what he was able to do on the field once LaShawn McCoy went down with an injury at the end of the first half. Gillisley showed a lot of toughness coming into that spot and running the way that he did, getting up the field in a north-south way and, and you know that one-cut mentality and showing some explosion while doing it. I was actually really surprised that the Bills got away from doing that in specific spots. You know, you think about the times that they had in the red zone where they tried to pass the ball and and maybe on a field goal opportunity when they're only two yards out and he's running the way that they are and the offensive line really was blocking the way that they were for him. Uh, I think that was a bit of a misstep for them on offense and it almost cost them, but it ended up not costing them. That was because of the play of the defense. From the defensive line back to the cornerbacks, it was really a total effort for them. And you can't too, go too much further without mentioning the play of Kyle Williams. I mean, the guy, Rex Ryan said it best, the guy is just an absolute stud this year. And you, you saw exactly what he was able to do to a Bengals offensive line that has struggled in spots this year, but not as much as he kind of made them. And it wasn't Kyle alone. I mean, Marcel Darius played very well in this game. Same thing with Jarrell Worthy. I mean, the two guys coming off the edge, Lorenzo Alexander, Jerry Hughes, they helped too. And the linebackers, Zach Brown and Preston Brown, they had good games. But, I mean, Kyle Williams was the standout of this game and really keyed a lot of the stops. Didn't allow their running game to get going really at all. Um, it, you know, even on passing attempts, Andy Dalton really didn't have the time to get things going. They couldn't complete passes down the field. And that's a lot because they were getting pressure on him. And, you know, Kyle Williams was certainly one of the keys to that. Now, the secondary was a spot that really came under fire. And I thought they performed pretty well. There were spots that you kind of go, okay, what was that? I mean, the touchdown pass uh, that went over Stephon Gilmore, it seemed like he was a hair too late in, in responding and getting back to the corner of the end zone. That's going to be on him. But Gilmore, I mean, when he was in a spot where he could make a play, he made a play. And I know a lot of fans are going to sit there and go, all right, well, that was gifted to him. It was bobbling in the air, and he should have picked it off anyway, or it was thrown right into his stomach. He should have picked it off. But the, the difference is he made the play. And for him to be a great player and for him to be the type of player that, uh, that Rex Ryan believes he is, that he shows and flashes the talent of, he needs to connect on those plays, and he did. So you can't fault him for or you can't take away the fact that he got those turnovers for the Bills. You can't whatsoever. I mean, he, he is someone that capitalized on those chances and turned the ball over, thwarted a potential uh, scoring drive for the Bengals at the end of the first half, and, and really put the Bills in a prime position for points and a touchdown at the, you know, by turning the ball over and, and getting it down to the five-yard line. The Bills should have cashed that in, but they didn't. So all of these are not... Gilmore's fault. Gilmore had a good game. I thought Ronald Darby had a good game. The safety play was, you know, hit or miss today. However, uh, the stepping up by the corners, uh, I think that was the biggest development for them, and, and they're going to need it down the stretch of this season. So the Bills, now 5-5 five and five on the year. They were two and a half games out of the AFC wildcard coming into the game. So that they, they has to make them feel pretty good going forward and they have a very winnable contest at home coming up against the Jacksonville Jaguars. And you see the, the smile on my face because guess who's coming to town, ladies and gentlemen? It is none other than former head coach Doug Marone, who is the assistant head coach and offensive line coach for the Jacksonville Jaguars. He will and the Jags will be coming to town 
along with former Bills offensive coordinator Nathaniel Hackett. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Marone Week, the Marone Bowl, however you want to script it. The Bills will be going up against their head coach, and, you know, no one, no one will probably admit it, but I think there's going to be a little bit extra motivation to get this one, especially at home following Thanksgiving and going up against that former head coach who walked out the door uh, after New Year's in, uh, in 2015. So uh, that's going to be an important one for them going forward. They're probably, like I said, they're going to have to win five of six. So uh, we'll see if they can get it done next Sunday. But for now, they're five and five and feeling pretty good. All right, from Cincinnati, I'm Joe Biscalia. Talk to you next time.